Uh, Rwanda is the uh, uh, 90 percent composed of smallholder farmers, so they have been doing restoration uh, even before Rwanda committed to the bond challenge in 2011. And, and, and of course the agricultural practices and the change of climate and, and the weather patterns and other issues and the increase of population of course affected also the land use and, and land cover which reduced the forest uh, to a very very minimum uh, 30 percent and mostly agricultural land of course was degraded because it's a really uh, subsistence farming year after year population increase uh, with a total of uh, more than 100 uh, people per square kilometer. So the land size is very small and it's really used for many reasons, especially for uh, subsistence farming. So restoration obviously faces all those challenges. Restoration itself, it's a long-term process uh, to regain obviously ecological functionality, and provide multiple benefits to people. It's not because farmers don't know what to do or don't know the importance of trees, but things have been changing and, 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 and the science will tell you actually how and predict the changes that are going to happen and be able to adapt. So basically we need knowledge, we need science to adapt to climate change, to adapt to the changes, even smallholder farmers themselves they need those knowledge. Science is very, very important, and, and combined with local knowledge, it brings actual efficiency in restoration. Uh, when I was a child, I could just see soil were fertile. I mean, you could see really biomass in the soil. Because of, of a farming, and, and use the same land for many years, um, uh, the soil fertility reduced over the years, and, 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 and where we used to plant crops in, and trees, they don't grow anymore. It's, it's really that conflict of use uh, that needs to really science and adaptation. It's very much linked to diversity and, and conflicts. Uh, my country, Rwanda, more than 80% of our trees are eucalyptus, so we call it a monoculture. And we have got 69 species of eucalyptus across the country. If you take a eucalyptus example and plant it with beans, you won't harvest beans. Eucalyptus does not compete with some of with crops generally. Therefore, farmer will say, oh no, actually, trees are competing with my farm. But if you go to agroforestry, you need also to be selective on what kind of species, where, for what purpose. Farmer will like the trees. And they say, oh, these trees are increasing biomass in my soil. Uh, increasing production, and, and, and I like the trees. So farmers sometimes uh, will definitely see the competition uh, depending on the type of species you plant. And that's where the diversity of species comes in. I think that's what I see happening on the ground. We have already crossed 100 million uh, Africa 100 targets that we had set. Now we're at 110 million. Um, we have crossed the bone challenge, 150 million target. Now we're at 168 million across the globe. Uh, so it's really time now to move from pledge to implementation. And implementation is happening. Countries like Malawi have already decided to put 7 million US dollars per year for restoration from their domestic finance. Uh, countries like Kenya and Uganda and, 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 and the other countries in, in Africa, uh, look at the, East, the West Africa as well, in Niger and Burkina Faso, they are already doing restoration on the ground. However, this really needs uh, a lot of efforts. It is a movement from smallholder to policy makers, to financial partners, to development organizations, to work together and, and deliver this restoration movement. IUCN has established what we call regional technical hub that support countries to do assessment of their restoration opportunities, to support the review of their policies and support their financing streams, especially domestic finance, towards the restoration.